the European Union. It was a fantastic object. It was something that will make the world a better place, an embodiment of an open society, united Europe. The whole EU was designed to overcome the devastating potential impact of nationalism after waging war for centuries. There is a shared realization that in order to make Europe sufficiently stable economically and politically, transfers of sovereignty are needed. We have something else in common, which would be what I call the European dream. You will never be completely left on your own. Europe is in a series of multiple crises. There's an economic crisis, that's the fallout of a financial crisis, and there's the inability to deal with these as a result of a political crisis that's actually been brewing for a long time. Europe's existing institutional arrangements as they are today cannot last and won't last. The euro, which was the high point of uh, the European integration, because of its flaws, has divided member countries into creditors and debtors. The creditors call the shots. We have a Germany that the others feel is crushing, crushing it with their economic and political weight. People see that they are losing sovereignty and they don't get any of the benefits of it. The problem with the common currency is that others can force policy solutions which may not be the most adequate. The austerity has proved disastrous. The austerity policy is aggravating the financial crisis. In Greece, Cyprus now and in Spain, the economic system is just in, in total ruins. Tremendous damage has been done, pushing the economy into a depression. Unemployment rates are all the way to 30% for, you know, most of the places in the south of Europe. The unemployment rate for youth is almost double this much. Six out of ten cannot find a job. The social safety net is dearly beloved of most Europeans, and it's the threat to that which people are most worried about. There are families who can't feed their children. There are people sleeping on the streets. That uh, austerity approach really has driven a wedge between people and the political institutions. You have a situation in which people don't trust the market, they don't trust the government. And this loss of trust, in my view, is one of the very important factors that are very much changing the societies in which we are living. In any kind of crisis, there's huge scapegoating of those at the margins of societies. People are suffering and they need to blame someone for this. If you look at the way they are treating undocumented people in the Netherlands, it's all a backlash. We have the UK Independence Party increasingly taking an anti-immigrant stance. Islamophobia is now in the mainstream. The country like Hungary, there is a big problem with groups who are excluded, like Roma. It's a convenient target for the opportunists among politicians. We see a rise of nationalism across Europe today that's understandable in the face of the apparent failure of the European Union as a political project. In France, for example, the far-right movements have been rising for more than 20 years now. You've seen it with the English Defence League. You've seen it with the Bloc Identitaire in France. You see it with the Jobbik Party in Hungary. The Golden Dawn is effectively a similar phenomenon to the Nazi movement, and that is a direct result of an economic policy reproducing the depression of the 1930s. The voters themselves aren't neo-fascists. They are people who are at the end of their tether. The lesson that has been learned is how easily the fabric of open society can break down. The challenge is to see through the simple storylines and to see where uh, hope is possible. The 2014 European elections are really, really important. We have a real potential for a major shift. We need fresh energy within the political parties. The political parties need to open up to young people. In order for a crisis to be a real opportunity, you have to have some kind of vision for the future. This period for Europe is a major transformation. Now Europe will go on and will again become a paradigm for other societies. There is a lot of space uh, in Europe today to bring 
a progressive alternative view that is based on equality and human rights and making progress for the whole society and people are waiting for it. We could revive the dream of being an open society, recapture the fantastic object that has gotten lost.